Shattering Glass Chapter 9. Rob was hot and he was cool. You know what I mean? He and Blair were a couple, sure, but nobody ever saw it as a love match. Blair used to be with Lance, then with Rob. She always dated the king because, face it, she's the queen. I like the girl. She's nice as well as pretty. I don't think she let anybody on, so I thought, along with a few other A-list girls, that I could have a shot at Rob. And if being nice to Simon Glass was what it took, fine. It's like Rob went to the pound and picked the ugliest dog there, because nobody else was going to. After a while, the dog kind of grows on you and you actually think it's sort of cute. You get that, right? Caroline Davids. My parents and I do a good job of staying out of each other's way, Simon sighed. They're in their study. I should introduce you. He plodded out of the kitchen, signaling us to follow. We padded across the living room that whispered contemporary cool. He rapped on French doors and pushed in. Mom, Dad, this is young Stuart and Jeff Cooper. He flushed and folded his arms across his chest, his hands jammed beneath his armpits. Glass's parents were a surprise. Mrs. Glass had dark hair like Simon's. She wore it long and pulled back. She was thin, calm, and unruffled, like a Siamese cat. Perched on a chrome and leather desk chair with one foot tucked under her, she tapped a manicured fingernail on the glossy surface of a massive desk and spoke to her husband. Come out of your fog, dear, and say hello to Simon's friends. Her quick silver voice blended with the muted music, Verdi. Simon's dad started, grinned at his wife, and squeezed her hand across the desk. He turned with just a hint of a frown, making parallel creases between his brown eyes. Heavy horn rim glasses were the only memorable feature on his bland face. Good afternoon, Simon, he nodded at us. Boys, crisp, clear, no nonsense, politely acknowledged, but not encouraged to make conversation. Young steward, Mrs. Glass said. She spoke to her husband. Would that be Dr. Stewart, dear? I felt like a piece of furniture. Yes. President of the school board, I believe. He glanced at me to get a silent affirmation. Well, he continued, your mother and I are working, Simon. You boys have a good afternoon. Dismissed. We filed back to the kitchen. Coop rubbed his arms as if we were chilled. Simon settled into his chair, reaching for the bag. He tore it open and began stuffing potato chips into his mouth. He glanced up at Coop a bit guiltily, then ate more chips. They're a picture in a magazine, aren't they? Coop took the chips. You know, Glass, my science teacher says you can light one of these things with a match, and there's so much fat in them, it'll burn like a candle. Coop stuffed the bag into the pantry. Get some towels, Glass man. We're going to the beach. Why? Simon wheezed. It caught up with me that Simon wheezed when he was uncomfortable. It was like his father's dismissal had cut off his air supply. To play volleyball, Coop said. Can't. Too clumsy. That was yesterday. Coop flashed his crooked grin. Things change. Yesterday I didn't know that hydro means water. He clopped Simon on the back of the head. Hustle, Bubba. The beach might move away while we're waiting on you. Simon shook his head as he scrapped back the chair. Simon shook his head as he scraped back the chair. Be right back. After Simon trundled out of the kitchen, Coop looked at me. I guess you were right, young. Glassman does live here alone. The beach wasn't crowded. It is still plenty hot in September, but the Houston overflow stays in the city after Labor Day, and the locals regain control. We drove the surf line, looking for friendly faces, and ran into Rob. Shirt off, his tan, muscular body had drawn girls like cats, like cat hairs to dark wool. His smile darkened when he saw us with glass. Hey, guys. I called you earlier and couldn't raise a soul. Now I see why. He nodded at Simon. Good to see you out here, Glass. Simon blushed and bumbled. The girls looked as if they had just caught a stiff whiff of something dead. Coop spun the volleyball on the tip of his tip of one finger. Let's get a game up. Sure, Rob smiled. The girls will play, won't you? They looked at one another, reluctant, and when Rob put one arm around Blair Cruz and whispered in her ear, she smiled and said, Sure, we'll play, won't we, Caroline? Sherry? They took another look at Simon and hesitated. They'll be on my team, Rob drawled. That was all it took. 
Lance and Todd are down the beach a ways, Sherry offered. I'll go get them. She flounced off, making sure that Rob watched her retreating behind. We called Bobster. He said he made us here, I said. Great. Rob looked around. I saw Ron at Perry earlier. Why don't you go look for her while we set up the net, young? No prob, I said. Good, he said. Come on, ladies, let's plan our team strategy. He leaned close to Caroline. I drove down the beach and spotted Rana less than a mile away. Alone, she stretched out her she stretched out in all her long legged lusciousness on a beach towel, reading. I remembered the day she captured my interest. We had a speech class together last year. When Mrs when Mr. Belvin when Mr. Blevins assigned a persuasive speech, Rana's hand shot up. She told him that a person couldn't be persuaded, only given permission. Blevins countered with the persuasive orations of Adolf Hitler. Rana argued that, Adolf, that Hitler didn't persuade anyone. He simply made it acceptable to unleash the evil already inside. She stunned me. My journal entries became full of her. She entered the world of my short stories. Now I stopped the car, wiped my sweaty palms against my t-shirt, assumed my I'm just too casual to live demeanor, and sauntered over to her. Mind if I share your towel? I asked. Shading her eyes with her hand, she squinted into the sun. Young? Tis I, my lady. Your prince has come. I have a dog named Prince. I laughed. So much for the smooth approach, huh? Bob gave me that line. For your information, nobody falls for Bob's lines. His kind of woman goes for his looks. I'll make a note of that, I said. Don't use Bobster's lines unless you're good looking. And Bob's an HSDO. Rana laughed at my confusion. High school date only. You believe girls don't categorize guys like you do us? Caught. I blushed. HSDO. Date only in high school where it doesn't count. Not relationship material. Feminine version of arm candy. Great. More to worry about. Where did I rate on this scale? She sat up. Want a Coke? She reached into a cooler and handed me a wet can. Sluicing off the water and bits of ice, I pulled the tab and drank. Thanks. You're welcome. What brings a nice guy like you to a place like this all alone? My heart was doing drum rolls. Rana Perry had just called me a nice guy, and all that exposed tan skin made my mouth water. Not alone. Scouting expedition. Want to join us for some volleyball? Who's us? Rob, Bobster, Coop, the usual suspects. I paused. Then almost whispered, and Simon. Simon, as in Simon Glass? The same. Rob's adopted him, and he's tutoring Coop in English. I thought that was your job. It was, but my father's pushing me hard to spend more time on my own studies. I wanted to change the subject. What are you doing out here all alone? Reading? I took the book from her hand, The Old Man and the Sea. Good place to read it, I guess. The moment lagged. We listened to the surf. English assignment? I asked. Nope, just thought I'd improve my mind. The old man was dreaming about the lions, I quoted. Huh? That's the last line, I pointed to her book. Come on. I stood up and pulled Rana to her feet. There's a volleyball game awaiting. Rana gathered her stuff and followed in her car down the beach. When we got there, the net was going up and Bobster had arrived. He strolled to my jeep. Let's hang back. They don't need us to put up the net. Sounds good to me. What took you so long? Dad made me mow the lawn. He laughed. I don't know why the poor guy never learns. You did it again, didn't you? Yep, and it worked again. He almost pushed me into his car to get me away from the mower. I don't understand, Rana said. Bob grinned. The bobster will explaineth. When Dad asks me to mow, I agree without arguing, and I put the mower deck on the lowest setting. It scalps the grass down to dirt. I mow like crazy right in front of the windows. As soon as my dad sees the bald patches, he runs out and screams that I'm hopeless and he'll never let me touch the mower again. Bobster leaned against the car and took my coke. Now is that punishment or what? Rana looked at the crew finishing the net. She pulled her sunglasses off and peered. Is that Simon? What's happened to him? We shined him up a little. A little? He doesn't look so... so... She tapered off. She tapered off, searching for the right word. She put her sunglasses back on. Come on, Bobster said. Nets up. Let's play. Bobster swept off an imaginary cap. 
bowed low to the ground and offered his crooked elbow to Rana. Lady Fair, shall we partake of this game of skill and prowess? Rana curtsied. Thank you, kind sir, we shall. Right, there's Bobster, Rob shouted. When the work is done. My charm is only exceeded by my timing, Bobster shot back. I want to serve first. Boos and hisses boomed out. Rob organized. Okay, girls, on my team, that makes, he counted heads, five. If the big uglies all play together, that makes, he counted again, six on your team. Girls, that won't be a hardship, will it? He grinned at his teammates, hands on hips, eyes twinkling as if they shared a private joke. Hey, Lance grumbled. You mean I got to play on a team with glass? Simon blushed. Well, I, uh, uh, Rana touched Simon's arm. Don't, Simon. He's a little head. When Simon looked baffled, Rana shrugged, as in, he thinks with his... She pointed to Lance's crotch. Lance looked to his shorts and we laughed. Anyway, Rob will handle it. Rob did. No, Ansley, you don't have to play with Simon. If you leave, we'll have an extra... We'll have an even match. Lance puff, puffed up like a blowfish, but he saw the mood was with glass. He kicked the hot sound. Rob rescued him. The grin and the teasing tone were back. But if it's even, that gives the girls and me an easier chance at tromping these poor guys. You don't want that on your conscience, do you? I guess I gotta save all the points. Glass is gonna piss away. Lance called Rob faggot loud enough to hit its mark, then took his place behind the net. Simon, aren't you hot in those heavy sweats? Why don't you take off the shirt? Malice dusted Caroline's tone. If I did, Simon wheezed, small children would run shrieking from the beach in horror. And if anyone happened to be equipped with a whaling harpoon, he mimed being shot in the chest. Wouldn't be pretty. We stared until a giggle trickled out of Caroline's mouth. Soon, everyone chuckled. Simon had scored. I whispered to Rob. I wouldn't have believed it, but I think you're getting people to like glass. Rob nodded, but his eyes narrowed in concentration. Yeah, but to make him popular, there's something we need. He dug his toes into the sand. Someone knew for class goat. His stare fixed on Lance. Rob seemed to have a bug up his ass about Lance from day two. I always thought it was connected to Rob's scouring in the yearbooks on day one. Lance's picture scattered all over the book told Rob the one person he needed to defeat. Or maybe Rob didn't need to defeat. Maybe he needed to annihilate. 